Hi there, I'm Scott, and this is Great Scott Knitting. Happy Passover 2022, Chag Pesach Sameach. This is the fifth day of Passover, which makes it the fourth day in the Omer. And uh, today we are talking, going to talk a little a bit more about this movement from slavery into freedom and talk about the importance of um, having an abundant attitude. Um, we've talked about uh, having a proactive attitude, which makes us responsible for our own choices. We've talked about choosing a vision, a vision of ourselves and what we want to accomplish in life. We've also talked about how to have the integrity uh, to put that vision into practice and execute on it and do things with it. And that's great for building that inner character, that uh, solid root structure by which we can stand on our own two feet and be independent. But once we stood, can stand on our own two feet and be independent, we, we also live in a world with other people. Um, we're not just in this alone. We have an effect on those people around us. We have a key role to play in working with the people around us. And so it's really important to take into consideration how we can effectively build our relationships to maximize our freedom, if you will, uh, to maximize our, inter our independence and change that into positive interdependence. And I think the key to that is having an abundant attitude, believing in the possibility of mutual benefit. And mutual benefit is one of those things that's um, a great thing to go for. However, we're often scripted in competition, the concept of win-lose if you will. Um, I want to win and therefore you have to lose. That's a scarcity mindset. That's an idea that there's only so much that there is out there for us to partake in. But I think we could really do better. I think we can focus on a couple of points and a, a, a couple of characteristics for ourselves. The uh, one is uh, courage, and that would be courage around what we want. Let's call that our win. But we also want to balance that with consideration, and that would be consideration for, let's say, your win or anybody else's win the consideration for them getting what they want out of whatever situation we're talking about or whatever relationship we're in kind of looks like this, that effective long-term relationships require mutual respect and mutual benefit. And out of that mindset is going to come the balance of courage and consideration. Now we can see people with low cur with uh, low consideration, but high courage, are definitely going for win lose. They have a, that win lose attitude. They have low courage and low consideration. They have that lose lose attitude. Not only am I going to lose, but I'm going to take you down with me. And then sometimes we might see situations of high consideration for, let's say, your win but low courage for my own, which might be a great way to help a, a young person learn how to play a game or learn the techniques of a sport before we start both playing at our best. But the only particular mindset that makes sense for creating I don't know, for creating that level of abundance and that feeling of abundance is win-win. The idea that we're both going to get out of this what we want. I think it's the only way to create 
good, lasting, trusting relationships is to go with the attitude that there's enough for both of us and that I'm going to work to as hard for my stuff, but I'm going to work really hard to get your stuff as well. I think that builds a, a lot of trust and creates good relationships or at least a good foundation of a relationship. In addition to that, I think we also want to seek the concept of mutual benefit that comes out of that win-win. And one way we can do it is coming into what one could call a win winning agreement. <clears throat> when faced with a challenge or I don't know, any kind of situation where you want to come to some kind of agreement that's beneficial for both parties or for multiple parties, use an agreement. And the basics of agreements really should be this, that you have mutual agreed upon desired results. Again, it kind of goes back to what we talked about with, with vision, beginning with the end in mind. Well, what is your end in mind in this agreement? What do you want to accomplish? What are the desired outcomes? And what? how are we going to measure that success? The next thing would be guidelines. What rules do we need to follow in this agreement in order to accomplish what we have in mind? What are the standards and conditions we have to meet in order to, you know, reach the equitable uh, uh, ending of this agreement? What resources do we want to bring to bear? Like what people, budget, or tools can we use? And then how are we going to hold each other accountable in this agreement? How will we measure how things are going? And how often will we do the check-in? And then what are, what are the consequences? What rewards are there for positive outcomes? And what happens if we don't achieve the desired outcome of this agreement? Using this type of methodology or this, this approach to conflict resolution or setting uh you know giving a project or giving someone a to a, a chore to do if you approached it with this type of thought process of what are the desired results guidelines resources accountability and consequences both positive and negative imagine the outcomes that could come out of that i think when we let people know what we expect of them and are specific about it, we're more likely to get that out of the interaction. But it all stems from believing that there's enough that we both get out of the situation what we're looking for. And not being willing to compromise Compromise is a good thing if you can't get win-win. But with compromise, everybody loses something. With win-win, everybody gains. So, you know, try that. As you're trying to uh, stand on your own two feet in freedom and as well as expand that freedom and expand your support system to include other people, to live in a world with other people, interdependently. Kind of like when we depend on designers to design really cool um, knitting patterns for us and dyers to dye up beautiful colorways for us to use in those patterns. We live interdependently with others, and we can live in this world of mutual abundance. 
it. And believe me, when you look at, if you were to look at my uh, uh, stash, you, and uh, well, as you can see it, that there's some abundance there. And if you looked at my uh, knitting queue and my favorites in Ravelry, you'd see there's a lot of abundance there. There's more patterns out there than I think I'll ever be able to knit in my lifetime, which is kind of sad. I think I need to live forever so I can knit all the patterns. But speaking of knitting all the patterns, here's my progress so far. I've, I've put another couple of inches on to my cold pale moon shawl. Really liking the mosaic pattern as it's coming out. And I can't wait to get to the next repeat so I can really start seeing it in more fullness. I got to tell you, I'm enjoying this opportunity to share a little of these insights and of course my progress on cold pale moon. And I hope that you are having a wonderful week. It is, wow, is it, it's, it's only Wednesday. It is only Wednesday, but wow, what a great week it's, it is. And I hope you're all enjoying it. So may you have peace in your home and the fullness of joy for all who dwell there. Bye.